In this video we're going to talk about how to do graphing using output from the process macro or file. And now I've already actually gone ahead and run this process file here uh, so you didn't have to sit through two minutes of video waiting for it to finish loading. Um, so it's ready to go as you can see and I also have our global warming data set loaded up so let's take a quick look at that just to remind ourselves what um, we're looking at here. Um, so uh, we are going to be predicting government action from negative emotion, but we want to see whether or not age moderates that relationship. In other words, does the relationship between experiencing negative emotion around climate change, the relationship between that and support for government action, does that depend upon the age of the participant? So. Um, we'll go ahead and use the process um, function here. Now, I am not doing this video to get into details about the process file or macro itself, um, just uh, to focus on the graphing here. But just to quickly run us through it, uh, we start by indicating the name of the data file, um, which is global worm, and then we have our output variable, our outcome variable, which is uh, government action, support for government action. And remember to use double quotes for all the names of your variables. Then we have our x variable, our focal predictor. The one we're most interested in is negative emotion. And then finally we have our um, w variable, which is our moderator, and that is age. Um, and we also have to tell it what model we're using for any of the moderation that we're doing up to this point. We're going to use model one. That's a single uh, moderator, as simple as possible. Um, and then we're going to also ask for um, us to fix the levels of the lines. So we're going to create a graph with three lines, one for 30-year-olds, one for 50-year-olds, one for 70-year-olds. Um, and so we're going to um, use the w mod val argument and tell r that we want this to be 30, 50, and 70. And then finally, we are going to uh, ask for the plot equals 1, which is basically going to give us values of x, y, and w um, at different points, so we can actually create that graph with those three lines. So let's go ahead and run that. Um, now again, I'm not going to go through the results of the process macro, but we can see that um, we do have a significant interaction between negative emotion and age. So age is moderating the relationship with, between negative emotion and the outcome variable, which is government action. Um, and we can see that um, there is a significant positive effect of negative emotion on government action. So the more negative emotion you feel around climate change, the more you're going to support government action. And that's true of 30-year-olds. 50-year-olds and 70-year-olds. All three of these have p-values below 0.05, so all of these effects are significant. Um, but you can see that the effect is getting stronger as age goes up. And that's what should happen if we have a positive interaction coefficient here. That means that for each extra uh, year of age, the slope is getting higher by 0.0071. Okay, so what uh, when we asked for plot equals 1, this is data that has been, we used the regression formula, or process used the regression formula, um, to plot various points on y, depending on the level of negative emotion and the age. So it's going to use the same values that we set using that mod val function, 30, 50, and 70. Um, and it's also going to use um, different levels of negative emotion. Okay, um, so I'm going to open up a script here so that we can start building our, um, our plot. So this is going to be a little bit tedious, um, but 
it'll be worth the results that we get. So um, we are going to have to enter in all of this data here as scores for our x, our y, and our w. So um, our x is negative motion, so this is going to be 1.67, 3.67, 5.33, 3. and to save myself a little time, I'm going to click and drag and copy, and then paste, and then paste. So that gives me this row of data. For our W values, we have 330s, 350s, 370s, so that's not too bad. 30, 30, 30, 50, 50, 50, 70, 70, 70. Our Y variable, uh, we're going to get nine unique numbers here, and um, so this is slightly annoying. You could decide to just do it to two or three decimals, so if we do... Um, Oh, 181. I think sometimes just thinking about rounding is takes as much time as um, just typing everything. So uh, I'm just going to do it. This is going to be the um, most accurate that it can be, um, assuming I don't make any typos. Just take a quick look, 4.018, 4.740, I'm not seeing any errors here, so I'm going to go ahead and um, get on to the next part of this. So I'm going to actually run each of these lines, x, w, y, and you can see over here that those are three vectors of numbers that have been created, but there's no plot yet. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is create another vector, and this is not going to make sense at first, uh, but I'll, I'll tell you what's going on here once uh, once we have that. So let's run that. But basically, what what this is creating is different. Um, symbols that are going to go into the graph, and so for the for the th three lines, we're going to have three dots for each of these nine scores, and this these numbers are just indicating what kind of dot it will be, whether it's going to be a square or a triangle or a circle or whatever. Okay, so the main thing that we're doing the this is the the very start of this um, is we're plotting. Um, we have to tell are what are what's on the y-axis, what's on the x-axis, and so forth. So, well, what's on the y-axis is actually just y, uh, the y-scores. What's on the x-axis are the x-scores. So that's hopefully fairly straightforward. Um, PCH, um, that's just saying, like, well, what kind of dots do you want in the graph? And we've already specified what kind of dots we want, so um, we're going to just basically say use w marker to indicate which dots we want. Uh, there's different ways to do this, but this is basically just setting it up ahead of time and then calling for those numbers to represent the different points. And so that's going to give us some squares, some circles, and some triangles, as we'll see. And then we have um, CEX which is basically telling us how much we should scale up or down, how, how big the elements of the graph are. Um, so if you don't have this, then it's going to just produce a standard size. Um, we'll put 1.2. That's going to make the circles, triangles, and squares a little bit bigger than they otherwise would be. And then you can play with it and see what looks good to you. Um, now what we want to do is put in the labels for the x and y axis. So for the x axis, this is negative emotion. And then the y label is going to be support for government action. And that's it for the basic plot. We won't have the lines yet, but if we run this, you get this nice graph with uh, appropriately labeled x and y axis. And you've got, you can see, you've got the um, 
squares and circles and triangles, which were defined by these. If you played with different numbers, you would see that it would come up with um, uh, different looking symbols. And I'm going to put a link up in Brightspace uh, so you can uh, see a website that lists all the different possibilities that you have, all the options you have. Um, next, we're going to create a legend, uh, which is going to put in this top corner here, just going to indicate the different lines that we're about to create. Uh, so first, we're going to, we want to know what the legend text is going to be. And so the legend is basically going to tell us, well, this is the 30-year-old line, this is the 50-year-old line, this is the 70-year-old line. So we're going to create something called legend text. And you could call it whatever you want, but that's pretty descriptive. And then it's going to be a combination of three uh, lines of text, 30 year old, 30 years old. Um, you need these in double quotes, just like the X and Y labels, years old and 70 years old. Okay, we'll run that, but it's not going to do anything yet. It just creates that set of uh, labels. And now we'll create the legend. Actually, we me do it this way. Um, so first we're gonna indicate to R where we want it to show up. So top left makes a lot of sense. We might wanna do top right um, if the lines were gonna cut across this way because there's more space up here. But since top, since the lines are going this way, top left makes a lot of sense to me. Um, uh, the legend itself um, is going to be what we just put above, which is legend text. So we're just specifying what, what text are we using here. Um, CEX, remember we said before, um, is scaling. So depending on how big or small we want this. Um, now, if you don't, if you want just default, you could just put one. Um, so, um, we don't even really need this, but uh, we're going to put it in so that we can play around with it if we want to. LTY, this is the type of line. So a uh, solid line, a dotted line, a dashed line. Um, and so we're going to just include some choices here. And again, the website that I put a link to on Brightspace will show you what the different uh, numbers refer to in terms of different kinds of line types. And then line width is LWD. And again, we wouldn't necessarily need to play with this, but just um, indicate some differences so you can see um, those different widths there. So let's go ahead and create the legend. And so that looks really nice to me. Um, and you can see, uh, for example, that the one creates a, dot, a, a solid line, three creates a dashed line, six creates a longer dashed line uh, with longer dashes. Um, and you can see that it called these three um, labels here to put here, here, and here. Um, and I just played around with the width here. You can see that this, these lines are getting thicker as you go from two to three to four. Um, so if I want to change that, um, I could, I, I would have to, if I want to see how it looks with a different Thing. I have to rerun the plot to get rid of that. And then if I want these all to be 2, 2, 2, same, then I could do that. And maybe we want the legend to be a little smaller. Well, then we go a little smaller than 0.08. So you can see here now the smaller um, legend and the lines are all equal in terms of their widths. So you can play around with stuff like that if you want this a little bit bigger. Let's rerun this and then rerun this. That's too big, obviously, but it just gives you a sense of the different choices that you have. Now, I think if I try to rerun this without rerunning the plot line, it's going to just put one legend on top of another. So obviously you don't want that. So if you rerun that and rerun that, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, and then finally, what we need is the actual lines. So not surprisingly, this is created with a uh, command called lines. And um, there's a kind of a lot in here, but um, so the line is going to, 
the double equal sign just means equals. So the uh, for the 30 um, year old line, um, we are basically specifying that um, it's the x and y of 30. Um, it's going to just link it up to these scores here. Um, so we just need to, whatever our moderator uh, uh, score is, uh, we want both x and y to kind of link up to this. So this is going to create the 30-year-old line. And then we'll do a, another one for 50 and another one for um, 70. Now LWD, we want that to be the same as what we put up here. So all of these now have currently have a width of 2. LTY, we want that to match as well. So for this 30-year-old, we want that to be the one that we had here. And then finally, we can play around with the color. By default, it'll be black. And you can see that um, in our studio, they actually colored it that, um, so we know what we're getting. So if we run this, there's the 30-year-old the line, which cuts right across the dots for the 30-year-olds. Um, it's a black solid line of width 2. Um, and so we can cut and paste this um, to make it a little easier to create our 50 and 70-year-old lines. Um, now our 50-year-old line had a line type of 3, and our 70-year-old line had a line type of 6. Uh, all of them have a width of 2. All of them are black at least to start. And so I just ran those two last lines, and now we have our beautiful uh, graph, which we could use the copy to clipboard to export it as an image. Uh, again, if you wanted to, you could uh, change around if you want this to be blue, and you wanted this to be green, uh, then you could rerun this whole thing. Uh, uh, rerun the plot, the legend, and the lines. I think this is actually distracting, and the black lines are best, um, but just to demonstrate that you can do that. Um, so when you have a different data set and different output, then you're just going to add in the appropriate x, y, and w values from the process results. Um, and then you can just tinker with the different markers, um, the size, like I actually think these markers might be a little bit too big, so I think a standard one might might be a little better. Um, uh, in which case you can just again kind of rerun everything. Um, and again, like I said before, I think the black is better than different colors. Certainly in terms of if you're doing a paper um, in a presentation, maybe there's some kind times uh, where you'd want these different lines. But notice, because I forgot until just this moment, this legend now doesn't match up with that. Um, so you would probably have to do something like this um, if you're going to have different colors. Color equals C and then black, blue, and green. I think that will do it. One last try here. Um, so that way your legend matches the actual graph. Uh, so hopefully this gives you a sense of how you would apply these different um, approaches, these different commands in getting a nice professional looking graph to represent uh, moderation effects.